Hi, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, providing tips on language learning, culture, and human development. And I think there, it, this often happens in our lives where we find ourselves trying to learn a new language. And I think many people would agree, sometimes learning a, a new language is no picnic. It's sometimes, it feels like it's a hard nut to crack, especially when you're trying to balance things in your life, when you're burning the candle at both ends. Those idiomatic expressions you can hear right there. But I think what makes learning so difficult sometimes is there exists a disconnect between what we're trying to do in the language classroom and what people actually hear out in our communities. The things that you might experience buying a hot dog in New York City or vacationing in Australia over a winter break or studying abroad in England. And I think this sometimes happens because of very formal and rigid learning materials that we often use in the classroom. And then students end up speaking like a 1960s English grammar book. They sound outdated, or perhaps our students sound like they're visiting from the planet Mars instead of sounding like the local community. I mean, they just don't sound natural. And I think, well, fortunately, there are many ways in which idiomatic expressions and different phrases can really take our speaking skills to the next level. Instead of sounding like a dry, you know, classroom textbook, we can really spice up our language and really sound more natural. Well, in today's broadcast, I'm really excited to have a wonderful guest, uh, Adriana Marces Tisseran from Peru, who is going to be joining to engage us in this particular conversation. And we want to welcome her to the broadcast today. So welcome, Adriana. Hello, Randall. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, really excited to have you today. And why don't we go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to address. And just like any broadcast, we welcome those that are joining the broadcast to share their comments, their thoughts, their ideas uh, throughout. So what we're going to cover today, first of all, is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Peru, uh, introduction to the land and to the people. Uh, your decision to become a language teacher. I think people are always interested in hearing that. Uh, then we're going to talk, many teachers and language learners are interested in finding out what is a typical language classroom like in your country. And one of the challenges we're, we're going to talk about, Adriana, Adriana, I'm sorry, uh, okay. is that, well, Peru is a country of diversity. We're going oh, yeah. to find that out. Briefly talk about the impact of the pandemic on the educational system there. And then we're going to jump into the meat of the broadcast. What are idioms? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why should we learn them? Uh, what approaches are there to teach and learn them? Uh, and some challenges. I think we would both agree that there are some challenges and dangers in learning certain idioms. And then we're going to talk about some useful resources that are available online. And then we're going to end up with some final comments. And again, just like always, we're going to certainly welcome people to share their ideas on the topic of boosting your English skills with idiomatic expressions today. And again, we also have some people from Brazil joining us and Shamin also is joining us and uh, your beautiful guest. So we're excited. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So let's just get right into the broadcast and Let's just talk briefly about you and your country, just some basic ideas related to it. All right. Um, well, Peru is in South America, as we all know. Um, and we are uh, very proud of knowing that we have, we like to say that we have it all. It's a very rich country in terms of land, in terms of people, and in terms of culture especially. We uh, take pride of uh, how ancient our culture is and uh, how much we can give to the world in, in terms of, of history also. So, and yeah, we're going to we talk more of that, that so in a proud. minute. Yeah. Certainly, we encourage people to ask questions that they have about Peru. But let's go ahead and start just a little bit about where you work, a little bit about your background, because you are a 
clinical psychologist, you're a singer, you're an educator. <laughs> if you could just give us a brief introduction on your background and we'll go from there. All right. So yes, I am a clinical psychologist from uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú. That's P-U-C-P, -P, we call it that way. Um, and uh, as soon as I finished my career, uh, my major, I felt that there was something missing. And there's something that I, I, I haven't told you, Renal. Um, my grandpa was a teacher. My uncle was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. My father became a teacher. And I felt the urge. Okay. I had to. <laughs> so, and that's probably. It's genetic, man. It's genetic. So I felt that there was something missing in my life. And I love to explain. I'm explaining things every day to everyone. So I said, I got to do this. So um, uh, once I finished my major, I I saw that um, I wanted to work with the English I had, that I had been building throughout the years. Uh, and I applied to this job at the language center of Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú. Um, and I made it and I started working right away. And I said, oh, OK, so I'm going to work, um, have my time teaching and have my time with patients. But teaching won me over. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't stop. And it's been 22 years since then. Well, happy to hear that. And thank you for sharing. And that was leading into one of the questions about your decision to become an English teacher. And it sounds like your family had a great impact on you. Yes, yes, they have. Uh, but I didn't know. I didn't know that. Uh, I thought, oh, OK, so they're teachers. So good for them. Right. But uh, but then I, I saw that I really loved to like show people new things. And especially I felt that uh, one incredibly important tool that you can uh, have uh, in your life is not in a second language, especially if it's English. Because I, even if you want to study something, you need to know English so that you can learn from the latest papers, uh, read articles, uh, know from like people that speak English and are uh, scholars over some particular subject. So I said, no, uh, I have to do this, and I and since then I've been passing information and, and sharing um, everything I get to learn to my students. That's great. And just so people know, you are an accomplished musician, a singer. <laughs> we probably we could probably spend a lot of time on this <laughs> and sharing more about your life and so forth. But I'd like to share and like people to know that we have a ver very diverse group of teachers from around the world that are not only involved in teaching, but are also involved in music. And I think even the things that you're doing as a musician are connected to the topic today, which is of idioms. So uh, if we had time, certainly we'd like to go and talk more about that, but thank you for sharing. And, and certainly people can see you on Instagram and actually listen to your voice. So that's oh just yeah, a little bit. Yeah, little, you know, like everything is virtual now. We cannot like at least in my country, we cannot like go to concerts yet, maybe in the near future. <clears throat> but um it's a wonderful opportunity to express yourself. That that's what I see that's what I see in like a lot of teachers. Uh, uh teachers want to express themselves. They want to share things. Uh, and they are very art oriented like lots of them. So uh, it's not only me, I, I chose music and I chose singing, that's my thing. But I've seen teachers that are also painters, uh, teachers that are like work with their hands and uh, they do fantastic things. So yeah, we let's say that we are, um, we, we like to do a lot of things at the same time. So yeah, it's not only me. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, there have been other people that are joining the broadcast, uh, from Tunisia, Hi, Tunisia. Uh, Akima from uh, from Tunisia as well, from Taiwan. And so Taiwan. hopefully we're having a variety of people join. Awesome. The other thing is I just want to briefly uh, talk a little bit about Peru. Because a lot of times when people think of Peru, they think of only Machu Picchu. <laughs> yes. So what yes. would you like people to know? In two or three minutes, what would you like people to know about your country and the diversities that is there? 
Oh, sure. Okay, so in a nutshell, <laughs> let's work this, all right? So yeah, people, when they think of Peru, they say, oh, Machu Picchu and the Lama. So yeah, this picture is perfect <laughs> because it gathers both things that everybody knows about us. But we are more than that, definitely more. This is in Cusco, right, which is like the cultural capital of our country. Uh, but we have many other uh, cities of incredible places to visit. And as you see in this other picture, we've got three very distinctive uh, regions. We've got coast, we've got Andes, and um, here is the Titicaca Lake, which is down south. But we also have jungle, which is not here, right here. Yeah. In fact, Machu Picchu is kind of like on the border between the Andes and the jungle, this is what makes it so interesting too. Uh, but we've got like the three regions and that is what makes our people also so different. And so, I mean, it's so enriching. Uh, we really need to understand uh, uh, that we have so many origins all together in one place. So we, we, we really need to um, work on our um, understanding and uh, being open-minded and, and 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 trying to be um, like like not I don't want to say tolerant but um, it's like knowing how to live with each other in harmony. That is the most important thing. But and I think one of the things when people think of Peru, they think of Spanish. But the indigenous language is Quechua. Is that correct? It is. In fact, there's something. There, there's something else. We've got. 43 languages in our country. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot. So there's a lot. It's a lot. And and of course we look at that, we can look at other particular areas. There's a lot of beauty that you can see throughout the country. Yeah, you really you need see. some oxygen to go to that. Can come go back to the other one? Yeah, absolutely. This, yeah, this is the Rainbow Mountain. It's in Cusco also. But and if you want to go there, get some uh coca. Uh, coca leaves tea so that uh, you, because this would give you this uh, high attitude sickness and you don't feel very well. But with those things and with oxygen, you're good to go. Yeah. And the other thing is we don't want to forget, of course, the city, the capital. <gasps> okay. Randall didn't know this, but this, this beautiful picture is 10 minutes away from my house. Whoa. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, we've got this and it's beautiful. But the thing is that Lima, the capital, uh, doesn't look as fun as Cusco, for example, or Iquitos. But yeah, we've got our things. <laughs> yeah. And the last thing I want to just share br briefly before we go on, on to the broadcast is just a little bit about some typical foods or drinks that if people were to visit Peru, what would you recommend? Yes. Uh, so uh, we are well known because of Machu Picchu and uh, the jungle. But uh, first, I mean, because it's super delicious, our our cuisine, our food has become well known throughout the world. I mean, all over the world, people are starting to know about our food. And uh, it's not that I'm Peruvian, but it's delicious. I mean, and it's very varied. We have like tons of dishes. And uh, every tourist that comes here, they say, yeah, this is good. So you should come and try it. That's right. <laughs> well, great. I mean, I, I think any one of us could have a whole broadcast just on the food, the drinks, oh, yeah. and so forth. Two hours. Certainly <laughs> some wonderful <laughs> drinks there. So thank you for sharing those. Uh, just real quickly, want to, again, welcome a few other people that are joining. Jorge is from Bolivia that is joining us. Bolivia, our brother's from Bolivia. Uh, uh, Sonia says, a beautiful country that you have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, also from Guatemala. Guatemala. And uh, Shamin says, I'm happy my students are watching the broadcast. So we have students oh. from around the world that are watching. Oh my God. Uh, Manuel so is glad. from Guatemala. And Yay. also uh, Nayeli. Well, as you know, oh, and Jorge says, thank you. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead. For most people that are watching the broadcast today, and again, Thank you, Adriana, for sharing a little bit about your background, about your country, about your food. 
And let's get into the broadcast, what people are anticipating as well. And just like any broadcast, we ask you, and the reason why people, Adriana, are joining a live broadcast is because they want to be able to feel engaged. They can ask questions. They can share their experiences. And that's what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to talk about boosting your English skills with idiomatic expressions. So are we ready, Adriana? We are so ready. <laughs> all right. So let me give everyone a preview. Of what we're going to do is, first of all, I want you briefly to talk about a typical language class. Just a couple of minutes, because a lot of people are from, as we've seen, Bolivia. We have people from Mexico, oh, yeah. from, from all around, from the United Arab Emirates, from Iraq. We have people all wow. around the world. <laughs> Often they want to know, okay, is what you're sharing today going to be relevant to me? Mm -hmm. And so if you could just briefly speak to that, then we're going to talk about what are idioms. Uh, We're also going to talk about why we should teach or learn them. Uh, Then we're going to talk about different approaches, how to approach that, maybe in a regular face-to-face classroom, maybe when you have 20 students, when you have 200 students, how do you do that? What are some of the challenges, dangers, and opportunities in mastering street English? And then what are some useful resources for us to address? So any of those topics that you've seen that you're watching, feel free to share your comments and questions for Adriana and myself. Right. Go ahead and type. So here, (laughs) Adriana, real quickly, people are wanting to know what is a typical language class in public schools? Yeah. Like how many students in a class? How many classes do teachers have a day? In that you mentioned in the mountain regions, is that going to look different than in Lima, the capital? What can you speak to, to a typical language classroom? And then we'll get into the idioms. All right. So, yeah, there is a big, oh, yeah. I'm so sorry if I get a little bit serious here, but yeah, that's how it is here. And I think that lots of uh, fellow teachers from from the countries you mentioned can relate. Um, Peru uh, is a wonderful country, but... We've got some issues that we definitely have to still fix, and one of them is education. And in public schools, uh, we've got serious issues, uh, especially when we want to add a second language um, in the in the teaching program. So, for example, uh, for starters, we've got schools uh, with classrooms packed with forty or fifty students. And uh, sometimes they just teach one hour a week. That is not a lot. And I know that (laughs) for those teachers that are watching, kind of give us a description. How many hours do students study English a uh, a week? How many students? And I think this could be related to the topic we're discussing about idioms and how do we teach them. That's right. So in this this hour, for example, and uh, they... uh, they can just get the basics and what i mean by basics is like i am you are and sometimes they don't go beyond the did i mean they, uh, they this don't is go. a pencil yes and and they just and another thing that is super important is that um because of this lack of resources and too many students and not having um like a very nice methodology to work uh, with the English and students learn to listen, but they don't learn to speak. And that is the biggest issue that we're having. You will find thousands of people here in the country. I mean, thousands saying, yeah, I understand you. My problem is that I cannot speak it. Right. And nobody speaks it, let alone use idioms because idioms are, are, are out of the question. I mean, they, they become something that they assume very difficult, which is not, but they assume very difficult. And even, I mean, teachers feel a little bit maybe uh, self-conscious because right. they say, no, maybe I'm going to say it wrong and maybe if I don't do it, I, they, let's just, just stay with the do and the did and, and things like that because there's, there's very little time and the teachers don't have the resources. So, yeah, we still have a lot to work on. A lot. And actually, we have someone, Jose, who is joining from Arequipa, Peru. Big uh, kisses. Big kisses. Someone you know by chance? Yes, he's been my student. All right, great. And then I guess from, again, we have people from around the world. And you're speaking to a great topic is that, okay, 
realizing that there are uh, viewers right now from around the world that are interested in this particular topic. We just want to keep those in mind. And you've just mentioned Peru is a country of diversity, but if some inequity in the resources that are available to people. So we'll keep yes. that in mind. So yes. let's just jump right in. Okay. So what are idioms? Everyone is waiting for this. What are idioms? And, uh, Feel free, those that are watching, how you've ad addressed idioms, teaching them, learning them, either as a teacher, as a student, and we'll hopefully address those. So feel free to ask any questions. So Adriana, take us away. All right. So um, idiom, first of all, there, we must make a distinction because it's kind of blurry. The, the, the borders are kind of blurry. Distinctions between idioms, phrasal verbs that can can be lengthy sometimes. They've got like three parts or four parts and say, oh, that's an idiom. No, that's, that's a phrasal verb. And sayings, because we say, oh, uh, for example, uh, I killed two birds with one stone. You say, oh, that's an idiom. No, no, that's not exactly an idiom. That's a, that's a saying. But pretty much they are parts, like bits of culture that like come in the same basket for, to say something. And we need to know them for this reason. Grammar doesn't move that much. In fact, we learn the grammar and it's there and movable and we learn it and we know that we can rely on that. However, idiomatic expressions are the colorful, full of life part of the language that is always evolving so we need to know to know it so that number one we become more natural and fluent when speaking we need to know them not only to say them but also to understand the person that is talking to us the person will natural if they feel confident with uh, with the person they're talking to, they will start, eventually start using one or two idiomatic expressions. And it's so nice to be understood. So that person will feel great if the other person is understanding that idiom that the person mentioned. So this is a, it's, it's a, a part, those are bits of language that makes our, our English way more natural nicer, colorful, and uh, evolved. So it's super important. Yeah. And I think many people would, as you clearly explained it, sometimes it's a, it has a figurative language and sometimes it has a dual meaning. Like Mario is in hot water with his girlfriend. <laughs> what does that mean? Imagine that you understand this like literally. <laughs> no, that's just there. Terrible. So no, I mean, we, we really need to understand what it is, which is like, oh, you are in problems with, I mean, he's in problems with the girlfriend. And then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we're talking. <laughs> Absolutely. And those, you know, like I said, those are the different types of expressions we're going to talk about. I just yes. want to go back, if we could step back uh, in Tunisia, Sonia says a typical class includes 30 to 35 students, and they study three to wow. four hours a day, which I think is still relevant to what we're talking about, idiomatic yes. expressions. How can you teach them? How can you make students aware of them? Thank you, mm -hmm. Sonia, for sharing that. Yes. Uh, oh, Asia Sonia says, saying in idioms are confusing. We're going to talk about some of that today as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. And then Shamin says, idioms are very interesting, and I taught them in Yemen. Uh, in my spoken English classes and my students enjoy learning them, especially when they are strange expression and try to use that. And we also had fun. And oh, I think, so I think nice. that's what that. Thank you, Shamin. Thank you, Sonia, for sharing those uh, thoughts. And one of the challenges as we start is some of the real basic, we're going to talk about some idiomatic expressions that can be used in different situations, but some that are just outdated. Now let's talk about some of these briefly, and then we're going right. to go in to talk about how to teach them. All right, let's do that. Now, uh, another thing that is so, so uh, it's funny about idioms is that they are arbitrary choice of words. So why they are said that way, why do we have to use that word and not, and not another? Uh, it's because they're arbitrary, but we got to stick to how they are said. 
right? If we change one preposition, if we change another another thing, and it starts sounding weird, that's the way. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a wonderful thing to know. And what we have here, for example, are wonderful examples of what we can teach our basic level students, right? Uh, because they are so easy. We have this um, this idea that uh, idioms are difficult and therefore we should teach them in advanced levels. And that's right. how we leave them aside. We say, okay, so first I'm going to teach the grammar and I'm going to wait until they are a little bit more advanced to teach them the, uh, the idiomatic expressions. And that's not the idea. The idea is that, look, they can be one word, two words, and you are saying a complete Con concept behind so when you say easy as pie right everybody will understand that it's that's no difficult and it means the same as piece of cake everybody goes for the piece of cake but you can also use easy as pie why is everything gastronomic easy it's very difficult in fact <laughs> but yeah it's it's the, the expression, the words that were chosen up in some moment in history, all said when we are like good to go and good to go is another idiomatic expression to say that we're ready, right? Super easy. And your students will feel uh, that they are uh, learning and the feeling of accomplishment, right? When they say these expressions is you have no idea, especially when, uh, of course, uh, your your language is so different. Um, go figure that we can say that this is a little bit, let's say a tiny little bit harder because you say at the end of a conversation, say, oh, okay, this person, uh, I didn't know that they had changed the hours, <laughs> go figure, right? Uh, but it takes a little bit more of, of understanding. And I want to stop with the that's a bummer thing um because i want to link it a bit for a second okay. um to uh something that happens <clears throat> that you mentioned at the beginning that um books usually teach us right uh things in a very formal uh dry way right that when you go to the states you don't hear those things you you practice in the classroom so uh, something that we learn here, for example, like lots of people, uh, is like, hey, I'm sorry, I cannot go to your party. And you go, oh, bummer. I mean, you feel it, oh, bummer. This is what you would you would hear in the States. But for some reason, in our books, we, we find all the time, oh, what a pity. <laughs> What a pity. Or, and you go, oh, that's too bad. It, yeah. it, it was limited to that. I know. So uh, that's my fear sometimes. Say, I want to give my students things that are true and meaningful. Right. Things that will that they will go to the States and say, oh, my God, I said it. And the other person felt that I know. Right. Because it works. Because, yeah, it works. Uh, but we got to be very careful um, with uh, outdated expressions or expressions that are not really used. Yeah. Right? And let me just mention, we're going to uh, perhaps talk about this more about approaches to teaching idioms. I mean, when you look at these examples right here, you don't have to tell students, okay, or a student doesn't have to think, do I need the past unreal conditional? Do I need the past perfect tense? <laughs> they, don't, they don't need any of that. They're just they really don't. short meaningful chunks of language that can oh, yeah. be introduced instead of saying, what a pity. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is meaningful. It's like, you can like just grab it and use it <laughs> and it's perfect. You don't have to, in fact, um, idioms are also, I mean, the longer ones, for example, are wonderful uh, ways to remember some parts of grammar that you are in doubt of. Because, for example, if you say, uh, oh, I will uh, kill two birds with one stone, for example. I mean, there you've got some grammar inside. Yeah. There is grammar inside. So maybe say, oh, how was the saying? The saying, 
Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. So I have to use this grammar and not the other grammar. So they clarify in some cases, but uh, yes, they are chunks. They're, they're short, and then you just go and use it, and it's very practical. And there are often times where students are learning outdated idioms like see you later, alligator, holy moly, and bees <laughs> knees. I have never <laughs> said that one in my life. And so one of the challenges we're going to talk in a minute, hopefully, is uh, their idiomatic expressions. And I think one of the challenges for learners is they see this list and they, they can't yeah. say, okay, is this one still used? Is this yeah. one used among, you know, my population? Is this, yeah. it's just a really challenge. And then you have newer expressions, be salty, spill the tea. Uh, these are all real challenging things that uh, I think students are facing to find out which ones are the easy ones, which ones are the outdated ones. <laughs> yes. which ones, you know, would I say this? And so those can be challenging as well. Yes. Um, let me actually look at some comments. What I'd like to lead into is why continue our discussion and mm -hmm. why we should teach them and learn them and how, what are some different approaches oh, yeah, to doing this in the classroom? Part. So let's take a look at uh, some comments because I think some of the comments are, uh, we have uh, Patricia saying hello to you. Nice there, oh, welcome. Uh, Mohammed says in Morocco, hours are dedicated to learning English, uh, depends on the discipline chosen by students and classes include between 30 and 40 students. So that's a good idea to get a numbers of, of students in Morocco. Uh, also, Mohammed says, idioms are so difficult to teach. And this is perhaps leading in our, to our discussion because they depend on memory more than any analytic method or tip to recognize easily their meaning. Of course, sometimes we can use logic to understand them. So Let's keep that in mind, Adriana, yes. about yes, yes, yes. how difficult they are to sometimes teach. Um, also, Mesa says, I think we should all follow you on TikTok so they can learn a, about idioms. We're going to talk more about resources in a minute. And then Sonia says, uh, there are known idioms that students can e easily understand, but there are difficult ones even for teachers. That is so, so let's true. keep that in mind. Mohammed says, hey, they're kind of difficult to memorize. Well, there are, we have to memorize many of them. Um, and then uh, Sonia mentioned about some idioms are easy, some are difficult. And we appreciate those comments. So let's tie those in, those uh -huh. ideas from Sonia, from Mohammed, from Mesa, is that uh, why should we learn and teach them? And then approaches to teach them. Yeah. So, yes, some of them can be difficult to understand, difficult to grasp. They are so different from, for example, what we can we can connect them to. I mean, in our culture. So you say, oh, my God. And just to give a tiny example, I know I, I was forgetting to say this. Um, it, it's super arbitrary. In our country, we say we have this idiomatic expression to say that something is super easy, super easy. So, Randall, how do you <laughs> No, You want to know. But <laughs> in our country, it, this okay, is Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Go ahead this and give it to me. Um, it isn't the strangest thing because in Peru, I'm not saying Latin America, Peru, to say that something is super easy is, oh, that is papaya. Papaya. <laughs> no. Papaya. papaya we say papaya the, the fruit and you go of course any foreign person that comes and hears papaya because anybody will understand papaya you go that's weird or when we when we when you want to say oh how unlucky that is super unlucky we say pineapple <laughs> all right i'm not so getting those <laughs> I'm not those. Yeah, but this is so connected to what uh, our friends are are uh, sharing right now. Mm -hmm. That um, sometimes they are difficult and di even more difficult to connect to logics. Yes, they are, but we can rely on other aspects of the language to teach them and make them more meaningful. For example, first of all, 
teach them within a context. And if we don't need like big things or big screens or even website, we are our best tool. So when we teach an idiomatic expression in the classroom and we do it with the right emotion, and here's where psychology comes in, right? You do it with the right emotion, with the intonation, and with the right context of the conversation. And it's a meaningful situation, right? That your kids can relate to, or your students, they can be adults. It's very difficult to forget because it makes an impact. And for example, I know, I know that tomorrow you will remember papaya. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to think of apple. I'm going to think of papaya. <laughs> but there you go. So I made an impact. It was because of how I said it, the laugh, the, uh, the couple of laughs we had, because emotions play such an important role in language teaching. Because when we don't have enough materials or resources, we have ourselves. And that is what, I mean, in the end, we're talking about communication and communication is this two people. We need two people to communicate right. and they can pass meaningful information, information that you can remember just by talking, but, 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 but saying it with the right emotion, with the right intonation and with the right body language, right. body language is key right or with the eyes with your mouth with what you touch so it's very important and yeah you we can actually rem remember that and i think one of the things when it was just mentioned mohammed and sonia macy were talking about different ideas for me one of the simplest ways that i've tried to introduce idiomatic expressions in the classroom and on my website i have a section on idioms is to give students enough sample uh, sentences where they can see that in questions, in statements, using different grammatical structures so they can see it again and again and again oh, in yeah. a variety of situations. And then actually prompt them to use them in short dialogues or short mm -hmm. conversations where Absolutely. they can actually put those to use. Because as, as people have mentioned, memorizing is the hardest thing. And if you only have one single sentence it's different to completely contextualize, just like you've mentioned so far. Yes, and you just said something that is key. Once they listen to them, they that they cannot just stay in the listening part. They need to use them to make to make that expression theirs. Mm -hmm. If they don't say it, then I mean we won't we won't have done anything because yes. One, and this is also related to psychology, one area of the brain is related to understanding, but another other kind of connections take place when we are actually saying it. So we need to say it, use it, and repetition, repetition, repetition. I mean, I cannot stress enough how, how important it is in different contexts. So, yeah. You just said something that is super interesting. And let, and let me, and thank you. But let me bring in a couple of comments right here. I want to go back to Sonia because Sonia was talking about uh, sometimes there are easy ones, but difficult ones for even teachers. Just so you know, Sonia, sometimes when I find a list of idioms in English, I don't even know them. I mean, I've never used them in my life. Yeah. Uh, and so. Here. One of the things I've tried to do on my website with the news section is actually try to indicate, based on my experience, whether this is a low frequency idiom, a mm -hmm. medium frequency, a high oh, frequency, because so I don't want teachers, we don't want teachers or students to sound like, man, that, were, did you come from a time machine? Man, it sounds like you're, you know, that you're back from the 1960s or 50s. No one says that anymore. I know. And so I think... Anytime people are looking at resources, and right now, in a minute, we're going to talk about some online resources in which yes. we can use them. It's really important for us to provide students with some type of measure of whether this is a high frequency, low frequency one, because sometimes teachers can't realize that. And mm -hmm. Sonia also mentioned context is so important. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, just to bring in a couple, Patricia says, 
It is indeed the emotional engagement and a contextualized real scenario as input, as well as meaningful opportunities for students to, I love it, to apply in the classroom. And so again, on my website and other resources, you can't just throw out an idiom easy as pie and then say, okay, there you are. Good luck. Yes. Uh, Mohammed says, absolutely. Communicative approach is a good way to play with the use of these idioms in dialogues. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a great uh, time. And then Sonia mentions enough time to practice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, Mohammed says, targeting students' <laughs> emotional intelligence is also a good uh, thing to move them to memorize. So all of these are really great tips. The Amazing. idea of repetition, of contextualizing, of, uh, of uh, dialogues are really important as well. Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to jump to the last part of our presentation. And again, thank you everyone for sharing those ideas because I think, yes, how do teachers know whether it's high frequency, low frequency, whether it's worth the time of using, how to practice it through repetition and dialogues and meaningful practice. And that's one of the things I tried to do on my website is lead th students through the meaning, through uh, example sentences, through practice questions and scenarios. But let's talk now about uh, three services, online websites or YouTube channels that you found useful. And as we go through this last part of our broadcast for the last few minutes, feel free, those that are watching, to share those resources that you have Please. found useful, whether they be a book or a website. So let's let's talk about some of these. All right. Yeah. And uh, this goes together with the other keyword that I always mention when teaching idioms: contrast, contrast, contrast. Randall, you mentioned this thing of finding books that that, that tell you that you're going to learn 3,000 idioms in a month, uh, but 2,000 of them are outdated or silly. Or no, 2,800. 2,800. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. But uh, the, the, one of the worst things is that if you use an idiomatic expression, right, that doesn't... Um, that, that is no good, right? You can break the communication. I mean, you obtain the opposite. You want to like be natural and nice, but you say something that looks sounds like like I don't know Shakespeare or something, and 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 then, yeah, people kind of like, okay, <laughs> right? I know, I know. <laughs> All right, uh, and yeah, and people and and that also brings a very bad psychological um, um, consequence. And it's you start feeling self-conscious about using idiomatic expressions. And that's the worst thing because mm -hmm. people don't use them out of fear. That's, a, that, that's true. People don't use it because they are afraid they're going to say wrong or they will say the wrong thing and they, may, they will make a fool of themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad because it's, it's such a wonderful opportunity to to be natural right so here's the thing contrast 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 if you find a very interesting expression hey yeah probably you can use it but go and check in two three four websites or places or forums forums are so important guys to right. check if that expression is actually used or not all right. So, for example, this first one that you showed, Papa, yeah, teach sure. me. Let's talk about. We have three of the YouTube channels. We'll talk about that, and then have some closing remarks. So this is sure. great. Thank you. So, so Papa, this guy, this guy's from England. My God, is he good? He's very good. Uh, he tries to teach neutral English, so that it's not it's not that you can use these idiomatic expressions only in England. And if he if he tells you, okay, so this is from England, so you see it in England, then that's that's what you can do. Right. But uh, if he's working with uh, work-related idioms or he's working about, he even has, <laughs> this is funny, he even has this, um, uh, this part in which he says, okay, this is um, great idiomatic expressions when you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, of course, is not, but it's, for example, to know words like 
uh, oh, I'm blind, drunk, or what a hangover is. But that's just to be silly. But he, he has wonderful, wonderful uh, information. And he's the first one. We also have and I like uh, just I like the idea about neutral English. Oh yeah. So that That's actually so you realize that yeah, sometimes it's useful to learn regionalisms, but at the same time, if you learn idioms, you want to say this could be used in a variety of contexts. And I think that's great. Yes. Let's go on to Lingua Marina. Yes, she's another YouTuber. She's great. She's very, very clear when when explaining, and she gives a lot of context when teaching so you immediately get it one thing that i have seen in these youtubers is that they don't go to the meaning because meaning is dry i mean if you ask me in spanish hey can you explain uh this idiomatic expression i will immediately jump to the example i won't go to the meaning maybe the meaning comes later yeah that's perfect but it's way harder to elaborate and people won't get anything. You go straight to the super memorable example and everybody in two minutes will go, ah, and that's fantastic. So she does it, she's she's very pedagogical, super YouTuber. Very clear to understand as well. Yeah. Okay, and let's talk about the last one. All right, and this one uh, is, is, this is not a YouTuber. This is awesome, guys. This is um, movie clips. Some person like yeah uh, had this uh, fantastic idea of gathering uh, movie clips all about, for example, four or five movie clips of the same idiomatic expression. So you see four or five different situations in movies or series, right, in which that idiomatic expression was used, and you say, "Wow, I get it. Okay, I know not only when to use it, but how to use it." Right. So, yeah, this is very, very good. And something that's similar to that is kind of something I've used is called Youglish. It's part of YouTube in which, uh, well, Google, where you can, it's called Youglish and you can actually type an expression or idiom and it yeah. will actually do similar to what you've just mentioned. It will show um, you short video clips of that expression used in public speaking and so forth. So it's called Youglish. Yes, that, that's um, so important. And let's talk about these last ones that you mentioned. Okay, and this is this is like, for me, right now, 60 or 70% of the sources I use for contrasting and checking to see if what I'm teaching is right. Uh, first of all, um, Teachers sometimes are afraid of uh, jumping in the bandwagon, you know, of um, social networks. We, we say Facebook and Instagram, that's more than enough. I don't need it. All right. <laughs> but we do need it. We need it because it's not that I will engage on TikTok because I want to see the, the silly dances that are fun, to be honest. Right. But no, we don't have to do them. What we, because it's so it's fine. I'm gonna do one. Yeah, you have to do one right now. I want TikTok. Your TikTok. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but two very important things about TikTok right now. Uh, if you if you do uh, the search that you have to do, like for example, looking for. Uh, uh, people that create content in forms of dialogues, right? Or people that tell stories, people that um, are, are, are given even scientific information in funny ways, right? You've got two wonderful sources here. First one, the very information they give on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the second one, okay, here's the thing. Here's the, the game changer, okay? Okay, I'm all Just, set. The comments, it, nobody goes to the comments. I mean, teachers say, why am I going to go to the comments? It's just people writing their, what they think. That's exactly what we need. We need to read the comments. I'm not, I'm not saying one or two. I'm saying like a hundred right. because in that way, we are also shaping uh, our minds in terms of how they say things, how they think, how they elaborate their ideas. How And this is the thing. Usually, when we read things in the past, that was 
okay, this is the way I should write because this is what I'm reading. But it's not happening anymore nowadays. But when you read a comment, people have started writing as they speak. Look at how important this is. We're not, we are going to read the comments not to know how to write, but how to speak. So Good this point. is a game changer. It, this is so important. And this is also happening, for example, in other social networks that I um, that I also included, uh, Quora and Reddit, uh, which are conversational. I mean, they, they propose one topic, for example, and people can join in that group and Hey, I'm, I want to talk about this. I know that this group is about cupcakes. Okay, everybody talking about the cupcake and everybody like enriching the information uh, in ways in which we can also talk, right? We can steal that little, um, that little expression and make it ours and it will sound very nice. But as I said, you read it and you go on your contrast. You check in three or four other sources and you're good to go. I, I like that. I really find that's useful. And then Mesa from the United Arab Emirates says, I found this TikTok account suitable for Arab students who are interested in comparing, there we go, contrasting, right? Comparing, yeah. contrasting idioms of two languages. I think yes. that's great. That's awesome. And uh, also Shamim says, uh, we can teach intonation through idioms to convey the correct meaning. I like that. We can oh, yeah. do this by repetition and go to some useful websites where students can listen to the idioms. And I would suggest Randall's website to teach idioms. All right. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Please. I have, I have to make a stop right here because I'm going to teach you. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys <laughs> um, how I met Randall. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry. I have to say it, but um, I met Randall because I was a big fan of his because he's got amazing content i mean thank you so much randall i have to say it i'm sorry i have to say it <laughs> but thank you so much because the content you create not only on your website but also what i i've seen you are have started doing on TikTok too is so important well, uh, in a TikTok, i see that what I, I see i see what you're doing because in one TikTok, you repeat the same expression like three or four times and of course you kind of push it a little bit but it's still natural and the expression sticks right so you go wow and not only that this is the funniest thing probably you guys have seen this too if you, if you follow uh randall on tiktok already but there's this funny funny tiktok that you made and your head is floating on a boat <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yeah, love uh, it. I that's love called it. experimentation. <laughs> no, I love it because I mean, you are on the boat and you're making people love. And learning languages is not only about repeating, which is important, but it's also getting engaged emotionally. And if you share a good laugh with a person, right? Probably that that interaction you had will stay with that person forever. So, yeah. Thank and thanks you. for sharing it. I appreciate it, uh, yeah. Adriana. And Don't then Sonia says, talk. thank you very much for enjoying the broadcast. And one of the things I've learned even today, Adriana, is yes. l learning from, for example, Mohammed sharing about emotional intelligence in the challenge. Mesa talking about TikTok. Uh, Patricia is talking about learner engagement. Uh, Sonia talks about c context is yeah, so wow. important. Uh, Elif says to understand idiomatic expressions, you need an idea about the culture. And that's a whole nother broadcast. Oh, about yeah, I know. So we can go this for three hours. <laughs> deeply connected. But we, we as we uh, come here to the end of the broadcast, I just want to thank you. And I just want to, any final comments that you might have, Adriana, or anyone who is watching about how we can make uh, idiomatic express, uh, expressions uh, more a part of what we do and what we say. All right. I would say, first of all, guys all over the world, take the plunge. You can do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take the plunge. You can do it. Uh, it, may, it might be scary because, we, I mean, as we said, 
it can it can be a little uh, we we can get a little bit self conscious and think that maybe we're not we're not doing it right. But with the things that we have been talking about today and the wonderful ideas all our fellow teachers have been sharing here, we can do it. Just contrast, repeat, check, try to talk with native speakers if you have friends from other countries too. Say hey, I checked that one with when I think with an English friend. I right? say hey. Do you, do you guys actually say this? And he goes, yeah, yeah, we say that. I'm good to go, right? So yeah, we can do it. Make idioms part of your uh, classes and it, it's totally worth it. And as you mentioned, just take risks. Yeah. Try out the expressions. Try to experiment. See if they work or not work. And as we wrap up, uh, Shamina said, thank you, Adriana, for your useful information. You are really amazing. And then Mohammed says, I'm sure how great our great teacher, Adriana, fills her messages with love and laugh will surely boost learning idioms. Good luck in your noble trip to effectively teach English. Thank you, dear Randall, for this wonderful time we spent with you. And thank you so much. And we just want to thank everyone for joining the broadcast today. Feel free on Facebook to share any additional comments. The three web services that we shared in the broadcast are posted on Facebook, so you can go back and review those. And Adriana, I would encourage you to go back and look at some of those comments on Facebook. Feel oh, free I to so will. Yes. to everyone yes, who is sure. here today. So again, thank you so much, as always, for joining us today. It's your comments that make this conversation alive, to be mm -hmm. a, a part of a global audience that in which we're sharing and learning and growing and blossoming, you could say, where we are. So thank you so much. We want to wish you a wonderful day and an even better tomorrow. Until the thank next you, broadcast. Thank you so much.